Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be doing a very random video about these uh, Thermaltake AIOs. So, a lot of people, you know, th these have been in the news a while ago, and a lot of people went like, oh, this is really stupid, memory doesn't need, like, you don't need to water cool your memory. Um, they're just doing this to stick more RGB in your system, and it's like, yeah, I totally agree with you. I, d I don't actually think that the priority was designing a good memory cooling system, because if the priority was designing a good memory cooling system, like, I wouldn't do it this way. Um, but I don't think this is a completely stupid... Like, water cooling your memory is not, in my opinion, a completely stupid idea. And if you've been watching my memory overclocking videos, you, you should probably be able to guess why. RAM does not produce a lot of heat, but it is extremely temperature sensitive, um, at least depending on the settings you're running. So, you know, especially if you're running something like Samsung B-Die, or my recent... Like, I recently found out Micron Rev B, so the 16 gigabit micron memory chips that uh, clock amazingly well and like they're really impressive for a 16 gigabit memory chip. Yeah, also extremely temperature sensitive. Um, the uh, like Rev E micron is also pretty temperature sensitive. My experience hasn't been too bad with it, but it, like apparently it is pretty temperature sensitive. Uh, like it's not been as much of a nightmare for me to deal with as as B die like Samsung Samsung B die is where Samsung B die you know you run you you run a memory stress test for an hour and at the start of the test it's completely stable and towards the end of the test it's just puking errors everywhere because the sticks are two degrees too hot. So. Um, and when I say two degrees too hot, I mean like the memory stick instead of being at 40 degrees at 42 degrees, which is actually enough to destabilize a memory overclock. So yes, um, RAM does not produce a lot of heat, but it is extremely temperature sensitive. So the idea of water cooling your memory to me is like, no, 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 this, this is not a completely stupid idea. I just don't like the execution here. So the problem, and why, why, why do I say I don't like the execution here? So the main issue I have with this is this is a 240 millimeter and this is a 360 millimeter AIO where the CPU, which is a very high heat output component, is sharing the cooling system with a very low heat output component, also known as your memory sticks, which basically means your CPU is going to be heating up your memory. Um, and I am not a fan of that. Now, I'm not sure what the loop order on this is. And with AIOs, that does actually matter. Like, if you measure the inlet temperature for your radiator and the outlet temperature of your AIO's radiator, there's a noticeable temperature difference between the two because AIOs have really weak pumps that move water very, very slowly. So there's a big temperature delta across basically, well, across the, you know, highest heat uh, load and dissipation components. So there's a noticeable temperature increase going out of the block, like going in and out of the uh, CPU block, and there's a noticeable temperature drop coming, uh, going through the radiator, um, which if you have a custom loop, you shouldn't have that unless you have a really underpowered pump for your loop. Um, so anyway, because, and I'm not going to get into the physics of that, but yeah, so that that's a thing. Anyway, um, the, the problem I have with this then is... Uh, yeah, so the loop order could affect it a little bit, as in it could be slightly more effective if the memory is the first thing that gets hit with the water after the radiator, but it ultimately won't still solve the fundamental issue that these are just kind of two small radiators. The thing is, if you're running a 10700K or a 10900K or any... Uh, you know, high core count, high power consumption CPU, 3950X, not really, because if you try to run 300 watts on a 3950X on, on a cooler like this, it's going to be going over 95 degrees, and it's just, like, it, you have other problems to deal with than the capacity of the cooling loop, um, though the 240 would actually struggle a lot. Um, yeah, the, the, the 240 with a 3950X would actually upset your memory. At the same time with the, the funny thing is, in my experience, the temperature sensitivity of memory seems to be more tied to the operating frequency than the absolute settings themselves. So something like 3800CL14 is much less temperature sensitive than, say, like equivalent uh, timing, like equivalent timing tightness, but, you know, 600 megahertz up. Um, but anyway, um, where was I going with that? Yeah, so like with the, the 240... Um, you know, basically the concern here is like CPUs can pull a lot of power in excess of 200 watts. Even a six core Intel can do in excess of 200 watts. 
And uh, Thermal Take kindly tells us that these are aluminum 27 millimeter thick radiators. Why is that significant? Well, let's take a look at this lovely chart uh, from Extreme Rigs, which was a great website. It's, uh, actually, the website's still up. They just don't post any more articles about water cooling, as, as far as I can tell. But they used to do absolutely great like radiator testing and performance testing. But anyway, here's a, here's a chart of a bunch of different slim 360 millimeter copper radiators. I, yeah, like these are custom loop radiators. They have to be copper because if you had aluminum radiators, then you get into the whole, uh, you're, you're going to need like anti-corrosion additives in, in the cooling fluid. And well, nobody really wants to deal with that. So um, anyway, these are all copper, but they're slim 360 millimeter radiators. And the copper does give them a slight thermal dissipation advantage just because copper is more thermally conductive than aluminum. But uh, you'll notice that like the, these radiators are like not really doing that great for over 300 watts, right? This is 10 degrees delta T, uh, which means these are 10 degrees above whatever the ambient air temperature is. So if you're in a 25 degree room and you're running like a, uh, oh, and this is on a 360. So, it, you know, if, if we scale this down to a 240, you can literally just scale like this 320, like we're call, we, we, I'll call that 330, that's 220 watts. So if you had the, if you had a 240 millimeter radiator, like a 240 millimeter radiator on a, on a 10700K, you're gonna be running 10 degrees above ambient room temperature on the water in the loop. And it's just like, yeah, um, uh, I, I'm pretty sure you could cool your memory better by strapping a fan and a duct to it. Um, so, because RAM does not produce a lot of heat. It's not actually difficult to cool. The main problem with cooling memory sticks, at least inside a system, is where they're located, which is deep inside the system, because they need to be relatively close to the CPU, right? So if you have your system, then you've got your motherboard... Um, and you got your, and no, I want the motherboard to be green. And then you've got your GPU, which is very hot, which is why it's red. And then we've got our memory sticks in blue because they don't produce a lot of heat. And then we've got the CPU, which also produces a lot of heat. So normally the problem in this setup is your memory sticks are deep inside the system, the, the, like they're sideways, you know, normally you have airflow coming in from this side. So like it's just going to kind of bounce up and over the memory sticks. They're not really going to get like the fan is also really far away. So you lose all the air pressure. So basically memory cooling is completely neglected by the way most cases are designed. Um, and you could fix that by just running your top uh, fans as intake and then having really tall memory heat spreaders. But, you know, like the, like if you put your radiator up in the top of the case, then okay, well now you're just dumping hot air onto the memory stick, so that doesn't work anymore. And uh, if you have your front radiator, like if you have the radiator in the front as intake, then it's like, well now your case is like all positive air pressure, so you kind of make like basically cooling the memory bit of a mess normally inside a case. Um, but the thing is, um, you're probably like. I, like, so the, the problem I have with this is just like, you're probably going to be able to cool the memory just as well by just, you know, getting a duct from the front and a fan um, to just cram fresh air onto the memory sticks compared to, you know, having this. Because if your CPU is under full load at the same time as your memory is under full load, like your memory is just going to get cooked by the CPU. So you've not solved anything. Like it's still going to run relatively warm, but... Water cooling does give us the, you know, incredible flexibility of having our heat dissipation wherever we want, right? Like, that's the main benefit, is you can stick the radiator wherever you want. And so, basically, my idea here is, like, the problem here is not water cooling the memory. The problem is you're water cooling the memory with the same loop that's cooling the CPU, which can be potentially extremely hot. So, my solution... Um, would be instead of having one radiator, like, well, yeah, in, instead of having one radiator, right, for the CPU, and yeah, I, you, you might need a deeper case, um, is you have two radiators and two loops. And the thing is, the memory does not pull a lot of power, so we don't need a big radiator, but it's stupid to have a 120, right? Because if you have a separate, like, completely separate 120 millimeter radiator for cooling your memory, that's dumb 
because the memory doesn't pull that much power. So the 120 millimeter radiator is completely ridiculous overkill. Um, it's also dumb because like now you're potentially like if you had a 360 millimeter CPU, if you only have 240 millimeters up front for, for intake, then it's like, okay, I can choose to cool my memory or I can choose to cool my CPU. You can't do both. And, or if you have 360 millimeters up front and then you have a halt CPU, like a 10900K, then it's like, I can cool my 10900K or I can cool my memory. Like, no, we don't want to make compromises for cooling the memory. The memory doesn't need a ton of radiator area. It just has to not share the same radiator as our very hot CPU. Um, and it also like, it like we don't want a 120 because if you take your 120 millimeter radiator and okay, you say, okay, well then don't stick it up front, right? Don't block the, the useful space for your CPU radiator with your memory radiator, stick it in the back. And then it's like, okay, so now you're gonna either run intake in the rear and intake in the front, which is, which actually should probably still work just fine, but it's weird. Um, so, well, actually no, because if you have your PC up against a wall, then the a lot of the exhaust from the GPU is gonna be bouncing, like gonna be hitting the back wall behind your system and that memory cooler is just going to pull it right back in into the system and it's going to get hot again so you've just you know congratulations you've played yourself so you're like you can't like rear intake can work but you have to design like you have to really think about what you're doing with your whole system cooling setup and I guess you could stick the 120 up up top and have that as top intake, and there's nothing actually really wrong with that. It's just going to look, in my opinion, kind of weird, and you're just going to have, like, 120. Like, it, it's not a elegant solution. It is definitely a solution. Like, that would totally work. Sticking a, a top intake radiator for memory cooling, sure. Um, that would be fine. But I think it would be much more, you know clever to just put a very very thin same length radiator in front of your main radiator which is what i've drawn here in my very horrible di paint diagram because basically um again you don't need a lot of cooling for the memory it doesn't need to be a high restriction radiator because again you don't need a lot of cooling for the memory the radiator could be 10 millimeters thin or maybe even thinner than that i'm not sure like there's probably going to be some thickness at which like manufacturing it isn't practical anymore uh you know so there are some considerations like is this actually worth building but you could stick a, at the same time, like these days we have a lot of cases which have like a lot of space up front. And I think if you're targeting this specifically at enthusiasts, like actually Thermaltake makes cases. So Thermaltake could actually use it to their advantage where it's like our cases have enough front space area for this, you know, like, cause the thing is like you would keep your standard thickness 27 millimeter AIO rad. Like we are not slimming that down. I, I don't like AIO, like, bigger radiator better radiator we are not making the the main radiator any thinner like no <laughs> this is not getting any thinner um 27 millimeters is already in my opinion very thin um so you know you go with your so you keep your 27 millimeter thin uh ai like main radiator and in front of that you have a 10 millimeter or maybe like maybe seven millimeters might still be like again i don't know how difficult it would be to produce a really really thin radiator and at some point maybe it would be better to have like a not like maybe you could split it down like what, what other option i'm thinking is like so actually yeah you could fatten up the main radiator oh man but that would get so awkward and no no you could totally make that work as in so you'd fatten up the main cpu radiator so you'd still have the same effective surface area as a 360 but you'd have a top like mini memory radiator right above the, the the main radiator and they'd just be sort of put together and yeah you'd have one like top rad for for memory cooling and then a cp like a dedicated cpu rad sitting below that and that would actually be arguably like, I think that would be less difficult to manufacture because there's like 40 millimeter like rack radiators for servers so that you, you can make those like they exist. Um, whereas I'm not sure, like I've never seen a radiator that's 10 millimeter thin, 10 millimeters thin. So, you know, that might get really awkward. Um, but again, I don't know. I don't actually manufacture anything out of metal. So 
maybe a 10 millimeter or even a seven or a five millimeter radiator would be totally doable. And the thing is, so either way, basically my idea is instead of doing what thermal takes done here, where it's one loop and you have one radiator having to handle the, you know, 300 plus watts of whatever seat, like, uh, because the thing is, let's say you use this on an X299 build, which actually you wouldn't because it only comes with one block. They should make a variant which go with that. Oh man, actually, I just had an idea. If you make the the top mini radiator 60 millimeters thick, you could have it as an, like if you wanted to do it for like a Threadripper or an X299 build, um, you could put two of those radiators, like if they were 60 millimeters, you could put two of them together and you'd have like a little 120 millimeter radiator in total. Um, and then you could stick that as like top intake. And we're back to the top intake is silly, but like that would actually, in my opinion, like uh, like that, that would be a more, mo like that would give you some extra modularity in my opinion. And then you just need some kind of like airflow blocker to, to go where the now missing memory radiator is because yeah, like, because the thing is, if you just have the fan overhanging the radiator, it's going to leak a bunch of air pressure and you're going to lose efficiency. Um, so that's bad. But yeah, if you just block that off, then it might cause maybe a little bit of noise, but might, like it might also, like there might be some weird interaction with the air coming off of the fan if you just completely block that portion of it off. But and it should, should, like, it would be better than leaking air pressure, And as far as I'm concerned. From a cooling perspective, definitely better than leaking air pressure by not blocking up the place previously occupied by that 60 millimeter uh, memory radiator. Though I guess you could also just have the second memory radiator with, like, and, uh, 60 millimeter fans are awkward to get. So, no, gluing two of the, like, glu gluing two smaller radiators together, m much better idea, in my opinion, to make, uh, like, a single 120. Anyway, um, yeah, so basically we need a mini water cooling loop for memory and it could be like modular with what thermal take is already doing. They could thicken up the main radiator to compensate for the, the height they lose because um, you'd be going from like instead of a 360 CPU radiator, you'd be down to like a 300, which... I just kind of like, which again, like it's a custom radiator. And if this isn't very popular, then the cost is going to be um, not great because low volume, but like 360, wait, what am I doing? 300 divided by 360. Oh, I did it backwards. 360. I was doing it the right way around the first time. Yeah. So you just have to make it. Yeah, so you just have to go from like a 27 millimeter thick uh, 360 up to like a 33 millimeter thick uh, 300, like roughly. It, it doesn't like it's it shouldn't like that shouldn't work optimally, completely optimally because you're losing like cross section is more useful than depth. Let's just put it that way, because if you have a lot like a lot of depth, um, you have the same air passing through a deeper radiator. So the air is more like you're recycling the air more and the air is less efficient. Whereas if you just have a larger cross section for the air to come in through, the air spends less time in the radiator. Therefore, you can like you're shoving more fresh air through the radiator instead of using the, the same air to do more cooling. So you kind of need more depth to compensate for lost uh, cross section, but... You wouldn't need to make it that much thicker. Um, and yeah, and then so actually that probably works out better. Like, yeah, if you made a 35 millimeter thick, 300 millimeter rad, and then had a 60 millimeter memory cooler sitting on top of that, like that would be great as far as I'm concerned. That would be absolutely, like the memory would be ice cold because memory sticks are like 20 watt, like, memory is like maybe 20 watts worst case scenario if you're running like four sticks absolutely hammered um and that's actually the entire no that's like 10 15 yeah like you don't need a lot of radiator for cooling the memory so yeah you you could like two yeah just small 60 millimeter radiator stacked on top of the big 300 millimeter for the because that would be a 60 by 35 millimeters as well um which i guess maybe it would make sense to make that top radiator a little bit thinner so that if you do go for like two sets of memory cooling um 
Actually, if you have two memory coolers, then you could make, if they figured out some way to make it possible to just attach the second radiator to the first radiator, because again, RAM doesn't produce that much heat. If you had a 30, like if you had a 25 millimeter deep memory radiator, um, or a 35, I don't really care. Like, so, like, so, I'm, I'm just, you know, that this is all very, very rough. I'm not like, but I'm just thinking like the, the main thing for me is like, I don't want my memory like if I'm if I'm if I was interested in buy like actually well I'm not gonna actually buy something like this because I run test benches I'm just gonna throw a, a fan at my memory sticks but if was I was serious about getting something like this I don't want my memory sharing its cooling system with a three hundred like three hundred four like the thing is if you get into the HEDT CPUs Threadripper is four hundred watts plus if you overclock it right Threadripper at stock is two hundred and whatever watts. Um, so, yeah, like, you do not want your memory sharing its cooling system with a 200 watt plus heat load. That's just dumb. You're gonna, like, you're not cooling your memory at that, like, you're, you're gonna be dumping heat from, well, you're cooling, the cooling of the memory is gonna be a lot less efficient than it could be if you just dedicated a very, like, and the thing is, you don't need a big radiator, you need to just, it, like, it just needs to be separate. Also, these two things, that, like, also this right here should not be a metal-on-metal -metal contact because you'd be leaking heat from the low, lower radiator into the top radiator, which shouldn't be very significant, but, like, like, like come on, just stick, like, foam in there or something. Like, I, I would actually just stick, like, plastic foam in between the two or, or whatever, just kind of, like, some kind of insulator material so that they don't transfer heat to each other too well. Um, and, yeah, and I think that that would be, like, like, you could do, like, crazy V-Dye memory, like, you could run slightly more aggressive memory overclocks on V-Dye, various micron chips, uh, Hynix DJR, as far as I know, should also scale with temperatures, so, and literally any memory stick you can think, like, b the vast majority of memory is somewhat temperature sensitive. It's very rare that you have a memory stick that doesn't care at all about temperature. There are some memory sticks where they have a very, like, sweet spot temperature, which, like, say a lot of B-Dye has that, where if you make it too cold, it stops working. If you make it too hot, it stops working. But if you keep it at exactly somewhere between, like, 20 and, say, 30 degrees, it tends to be pretty happy. And it's just like, yeah, so this isn't a stupid, like, this, th this is, like, the beginnings of something that would actually be really cool for memory cooling. Um... As far as I'm concerned, uh, though, at the same time, I think this isn't like, I don't think anybody's ever going to implement anything like this. I also don't think this is ever going to get like th this is like th this in its current incarnation, in my opinion. Yeah, it's it's an R G It's a pretty lame RGB gimmick where it's just like we want to water cool the memory sticks, but the memory is also share like, no, don't put your 20 watt heat like don't take your. 10 watt 20 watt memory system and hook it up to the same cooling system as your 300 watt cpu that's just no good right but again like i i think like thermal take as far as i'm concerned are primarily doing it to stick more rgb in your system they're not actually concerned about cooling the memory but like, and the thing is, they also sell memory sticks, which, as far as I know, currently, they only sell Hynix-based memory sticks, which, as for, like, again, I'm, I'm, I've not tested any DJR, but in my, like, from what I know, VDI and, like, Sam, and my, well, from my most recent experience, Micron Rev B, um, which is funny how both of those ICs have a B in their revision labels, um, but, uh, and they're both extremely temperature sensitive, but still, it's like, yeah, th this is, this could be taken a lot for, like, I, I don't, like, the thing is, yeah, shame that Thermaltake doesn't sell those memory chips, because if they sold those memory chips, then they could also have, like, like, I don't know how far you'd want to push it, but you could have, like, a second XMP profile um, on your memory sticks that is only validated for up to 35 degrees or something, right, which... Like, you can't have that on a normal memory kit. For a normal memory kit, you have to have XMP profiles that work well over 50 degrees because normally, if you're not, if you don't care about cooling your memory sticks, they're going to go over 50 degrees. That's just kind of what they do. And that's fine. It's not going to harm the memory stick. It just, you can't run the same overclocks at 55 degrees as you can at 40 or at 35. 
So you could have like a like extreme cooling memory profile built into the memory stick and then you know have that profile where it's like this profile only works if you also have this this cooling system or um i don't know sell the memory with the cooling system you could go even that far right like i i don't know like but i i like the like this isn't as stupid as it seems i just don't like the implementation so yeah um anyway that's it for the video um it's just kind of like yeah the, you know oh and actually if they wanted to take it even further you could get a peltier uh, onto the memory side of things and then you'd actually probably need a, and you'd need a bigger memory radiator but you could chill the memory sticks um to just like a couple degrees like at two ambient temperature um again you wouldn't want to push them below like you wouldn't want to push them below ambient temperature because of the uh, because of con like potential condensation issues, but you could totally hold a kit of memory at exactly ambient or like one degree above ambient. There's not really any reason to do that. Just like keep the memory sticks at exactly ambient temperature. And it's just like, you know, if you want to run like for, for B-Dye, that's going to be like, you know, 50 more megahertz. <laughs> um, no, I like, I think it would be cool. I, I think something like that would be like the the Peltier thing not so cool but like what like if you got the initial you know water loop just for the memory thing set up then adding a Peltier to the memory cooling would not be very difficult. In fact, you could add the Peltier to the cooling with this setup and it wouldn't be a problem because the Peltier you know the like it would actually the the Peltier would upset your CPU. Basically, I do not believe in sharing cooling systems. Like, I am very much not a fan of having one thing cooling multiple hot components because it's just like, but now you're making the other hot component hotter by introducing extra heat from this other random piece of stuff that it's like, no, give it its own radiator, give it its own cooling system. Um, or get an even bigger radiator, which, um, well, I guess you could make the radiator thicker again to, to comp like, yeah, if you made the radiator thicker to compensate for the extra heat output of the, the Peltier, then you wouldn't really have that problem. The thing is, again, it's just like the, the 27 millimeter radiator, the reason why uh, like Thermaltake is using that is that is a standard radiator size. So I don't know, like, like I'm saying, oh yeah, just make the radiator a couple millimeters thicker. It's just like that could easily add a significant amount of cost to the manufacturing because it's just like nobody makes radiators in this size this is completely stupid why would you want a radiator that's not the standard 27 millimeters thick what is wrong with you <laughs> it's like oh and you only need a hundred of them <laughs> and at that point you don't even want to know how much they're going to charge you um so yeah Anyway, I'm I'm just gonna like that that's that's all I have to to say at this point for this video. But yeah, like th this isn't like I'm I'm just gonna end this video because all like at this point I'm just going in circles with my thoughts. So uh, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. Um, what else was there? If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. Um, helps out immensely if, you know, like getting supported through that. And then there's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch, which uh, same purpose as the Patreon. It helps out immensely with running the channel. So yeah, that is it for the video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.